And thank you for joining us here on PM Express. And tonight we are looking at the situation in the Volta region, the Volta Flats, caught unprepared. And we're talking about the Volta Flats, not necessarily relating to what is happening in the Volta region, but what is happening across the entire length of the Volta River, black, white Volta, all the way down south. We've seen the situation that we have been talking about the last few days with the Akosomo Dam spillage. But if you go up north, you see the national picture beginning to emerge. This is affecting communities up north all the way down south as well. This is a national emergency indeed. Some have described this tonight. There is a significant number of people, including organizations, piling pressure on the government to declare a, a, a state of emergency in the areas affected. Now, one of the key areas that we are looking at is along the Volta Lake, as you see here, because as you notice, that Volta Lake is, stretches all the way up north uh, and coming down. These red areas here, as you see, are the areas where we've dammed it for hydroelectric power generation. You recall a few weeks back, there was a lot of reports that we were re re receiving that the Bui Dam itself may have been spilled, causing floods. The Bui Authority said that wasn't true. Now we're learning that it may be as a result of the Volta Lake itself, which was gradually beginning to fill up and were flowing these banks and causing the uh, flooding that we saw up uh, around that area. And then you, you, you see it all the way down to Akosoma, which is what you see here, and then the Kwon Dam. Now, the challenge that we are seeing in the Volta region and the areas where it's affected by the flooding that we've seen over the last few days is because once you spill this area here with Akosomo Dam, you have a situation where the um, water that is being spilled in excess, in excess of water that is being spilled that is flooding the area that you see between Akosomo and also the, the, uh, the Kwon Dam area. That, that is a big challenge indeed. Uh, for NADMO and others uh, currently working to try and deal with this particular problem. And I, if, you, if you isolate the picture a bit, you begin to see the challenge I'm talking about. This is your Atlantic Ocean here. And so all these communities that you find in this particular area are those that have been affected by, by the floods. But as I, I've been saying, we're seeing the challenge all the way up north. And I want to close this a bit more because you begin to see as it flows from the north in, the heavy rains, persistent rains that we've seen in the northern territories, way beyond uh, Ghana in Burkina Faso and other areas. It's flowing down, all the way down into the, into the Volta, and it's creating the problems that we've seen. Now, one of the key things that we are also uh, learning on this particular issue is the particular communities also affected uh, by this particular situation. Not necessarily what we've been reporting. The focus has been here, and rightly so. And tonight we spent a bit more time there. But if you look at the Black Volta itself, as it meanders and joins uh, the, the Volta Lake as we know it right now, itself also has its own challenges. Because we've seen more than usual rainfall, today the Met Office say what we are actually witnessing in terms of the rains is normal for this time of year. That is actually interesting because the last time we saw this level of spillage in Yakosho Modam is 2010. That's, that's a quite, quite some time back, 2010, almost uh, 13 years since we, we saw this level of spillage. But the Met Office say what we're experiencing right now in terms of the rains that we're witnessing at this time is normal. But he asked the, the VRA, they tell you that they are also experiencing unusual, unusual amounts of water all flowing into the Volta Lake, and getting stuck behind the dam walls, which needs to be spilled. We're talking about a maximum operating capacity of 277.5 feet. They have reached that point, and they must spill. Other than that, we're going to have a situation where the dam itself is breached, and that can have catastrophic consequences. So that is the picture, or the national picture, uh, when it comes to the areas that we're seeing uh, affected. And if you drill down a bit more, you see along the Volta, as I've been talking about, the communities affected. You have the Volta Lake here, and then you begin to see uh, the picture emerge of the central Gonja area, which we know is also experiencing flooding, and they've been experiencing flooding for the last few weeks, right? So whereas we're focusing a bit here, 
If you go to Central Gonja, we talk to the DCE there, they have been dealing with this problem along the Volta, right? And then you also look at Pru East. Pru East also has the same challenge. They've also, way before we started reporting the situation here in the, in, in the Volta area and, uh, you know, downstream of the Akosomo Dam, we're reporting flooding, affecting homes and sweeping property and livelihoods away. The, the member of parliament for the area, uh, who is also a former uh, your power minister, uh, Dr. Kabna Donko, has been saying that they have been neglected because obviously, compared to what is we seeing down south and the devastation and the, uh, the, our ability to cover this, because it's very close to us, is is obviously brought the gravity of the situation to light. But we haven't focused as much here. And I want to give the national picture as we focus and zoom in on what is happening here so that we appreciate the, the, what we are talking about. This is a national issue right now. Why do we say that? We, ha- we had a Navy yesterday actually confirm that it had to rescue about 8,000 people across the length of the Volta Lake, as I've just been illustrating to you. And then you also have Pru West. So you have Pru East, you have Pru West, all of them affected by the flooding. So you see the flooding here, you see the flooding here, that deep blue is flooding as we've been tracking over the last few days. And then you see the central Gonja area flooding also there. So there's something unusual happening along the banks of the, of the, of, of the Volta, indeed. That is something that we need to be focusing on. But then you come to the area uh, where we've been talking about quite a lot in the last few days. I'm talking about the Noktong area, downstream of the Akosomo Dam itself. Noktong has been hit quite severely. We'll be talking to Samuel Okuyezo Ablakwa, who today is grateful uh, that a many religious organizations are coming to the aid of the people there. He talks about some 10,000 people affected in areas like, uh, uh, as we said, like Mepe, for example, in his constituencies. Then we have also Jaman, also affected by the situation downstream of the Volta Lake, uh, downstream of the Akosomo Dam following the spillage. You have the Central Tong uh, District also. You have the South Tong uh, you also have the Shio Sudoku area affected by this. Uh, you have the Adan East area affected uh, by the situation, and Anglogan also affected. As you see on your screens there, that is the Volta Lake and this path there. So you're beginning to see a situation where that path that you see, the Volta Lake, the path, the communities along the stretch, they rely on the Volta Lake for the agriculture, for the aquaculture, but they are beginning to see following the spillage of the Akosomo uh, Dam, that the waters have now become very destructive. The entire communities have been submerged and swept away. Um, that's how bad the situation is in that part of the, of, of the Volta region. And I, I want to focus a bit more on Mipe for you because that's one of the areas that has been, has been hit. But why is Mipe so, uh, so hit? Now, if you look at how the, the water there meanders when it gets to Mipe, you will see why that area is taking the full force of the floods following the spillage. Because the, the water have to meander a bit more. There isn't a direct flow, as you have, for example, right after Mipe. So you see, you see this area here? You see how the water here comes in here and almost need to do a climb before it descends into the ocean. So the, the force with which the water can move in is slowed. So you have an accumulation of water, and also because of the force of, what, of which the water is now pouring in after the spillage, it then gathers here and then spills over into communities. That's why this whole area here, we marked it red. And also because of the meandering. And as we saw on that screen, the live the Google uh, Earth image tells you, gives you a sense of why Mepe is, is a focus there. And that's what you see there, that meandering, that's there. You see that the huge... Uh, size of the lake when it gets the width is, is wider because the water is having to meander a bit more compared to the other areas and is then spilling over into the areas and affecting people. That is a reason why we see Mipe quite affected. It, be, it comes all the way down to a bigger dam, for example, just when it enters the estuary. This is so bad that the estuary itself, where the lake is, is supposed to enter into the ocean, is now sending the water back up into the community. So you have in the situation this should go this way. Right, but it's going back up. Um, it is. It is quite a very fascinating situation we're witnessing, and many communities are beginning to take the full brunt of this. And Nanmu gives us the numbers, and we're going to pour about those numbers pretty shortly. And you see here again, just to illustrate a point for you, 
this is this is where we are looking at now uh, in in this particular territory here because of that meandering nature of the water causing a bit of damage uh, in in that part of North Tong. And then these are the numbers here, huge numbers. 26,000 people displaced, and this may be conservative estimates, according to NATMO, by the way. NATMO itself giving us, um, giving, giving us a picture. This is the uh, aqua safari area and its environs you see on your screens there, and that area has also been overtaken by the flood waters uh, in that particular part of the country. But these numbers are startling. Only 6,000 of them have been evacuated and settled. 20,000 people have been left to go into friends and you know, other relatives and they obviously have been left with very little relief. And so we're getting a lot of the complaints from that group of people. So this is a, an emergency. And there's this pressure tonight on the government to declare a state of emergency in the areas affected. And we've seen Christian uh, bodies like the, uh, the, the Assemblies of God Church Ghana making that call tonight. We also know, as of tonight, the inter-ministerial committee set up to coordinate the relief effort have been meeting. We've been told to expect a major announcement uh, by the inter-ministerial committee uh, coordinating the relief efforts. And that may include a formal declaration of a state of emergency in the areas affected. The areas that I've been talking about, Mipe, for example, once that happens, it triggers the release of resources. It triggers the release of massive national resources, the commandeering of, uh, of, of, of extraordinary budget, focusing in this area and getting the attention. Then also, you hear from Okuji Tabalaka shortly that his partners and the diplomatic community are looking and waiting for that declaration so they can also trigger the release of uh, donor help for the people there. So that is important when you're watching this. And I've told you about the history of this. 2010, 2013, 13-year gap is the last time they, they have to spill this much, 11 spillage. But So this tells you the story. And we'll be getting a picture from the uh, VRA, how I compare this to that, because you didn't hear as much of devastation in 2010 as compared to what we're hearing now. Is it because there's more coverage? But that's something that we're going we're gonna to pour into. But this is the, the, the story of the real numbers, why the VRA is spilling. And many people have asked the question, why? Because, look, they have to maximum operating capacity, according to their own website, is 277.5 feet. They, as of, this is 2022, by the way, 2022, same period, right? As of 15th October, they were at 271. So they were below that maximum operating level. And so nothing happened last year. But we're talking about now where they are in 277 feet, just around that, and sometimes threatening to go over this. If they don't maintain, if they don't try and deal with this, what's going to happen is that you may breach the dam. And that could be very devastating indeed, even far worse than what we're experiencing currently. If you look at the actual numbers here, you look at the uh, 15th September, they started spilling this. That, at that time, they were 272.5 uh, feet at the time. As of 15th October 2023, this is still climbing, right? But in the last few days, it's been dropping. It's been dropping because it's been consistent spillage. But here's the bad news. Tonight, Met Office says, expect more rings. Now, expect more rings means you're going to have the reservoir fill up a bit more, which means you expect VRA to spill even more. It may even be spilling more than they have over the last few days. That is the, is the danger. And so, key question, now that we know that forecast, what else are state agencies doing to prepare for the next one month? Because the net says expect more rings to come. So VRA will have to spill uh, much more. So key question, caught unprepared? It appears so, right? So what lessons are we learning? But what's the situation tonight? Do those currently still in the flood waters, uh, what help are they getting? The president went there yesterday. Has anything changed uh, since he was there? And how close are we? to declaration of a state of emergency. My guess, after this. Daddy? Daddy? <sighs> this tank is big! Yes, that's true. It can store a lot of water. That's so true. Wow. It has a working surface on it. Mm hmm That's so true. I can see S I N T E S syntax. 
That is so true, my daughter. But it's father, it was Pyro. That's not true. But why? Why? <laughs> Syntex was the first to introduce double layer tanks in Ghana. Syntex again was the first to introduce white inner layers in Ghana. Syntex gives you the biggest warranty seven years. No matter your water needs, Syntex is the answer. Syntex tank. Are you strong? Are you tough? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of flamingo paint. As compared to other paint brands on the market, we take equal quantities of flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, flamingo has painted a much larger area you know one bucket of flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability superior hiding superior coverage flamingo paint simply superior to mark your calendar for our annual alumni homecoming and the grand celebration of UBSA's 58th anniversary as we gather under the theme, The Global Impact of Professionals in Business. Program lineup for the celebration are as follows. Friday, 27th October, 2023. Ignite the night with a bonfire and drama performances with old school dressing. Variety of entertainment at 7 p.m. Saturday, 28th October. Get your adrenaline pumping with alumni fun games. Current students will contribute to a noble cause with blood donations starting at 7 a.m. Tuesday, 31st October. Mentorship sessions at 2 p.m. All activities will take place right on the UPSA campus where it all began. For more more information, visit our website at www.upsaglobalalumni.com or contact the UPSA Alumni Office on 0243-288-579 or Room 19 Central Administration. UPSA Scholarship with Professionalism. Whiskey. <laughs> Wash it. All of a sudden, my voice, I hear different. And when you saw a call, <laughs> uh, Bama, bring me the honey whiskey. You know the one? Black Rock Whiskey. Honey whiskey. Shale, honey near their fro. Black Rock Whiskey is strong. Now, so test me is smooth. And it goes down easy. Uh, excuse me. Mm. <laughs> Bama, <laughs> Bama. Bring my friend one Black Rock Whiskey. Black Rock Whiskey, blended with natural honey flavor. Bama. Hey, what the old Black Rock Whiskey. Tell me the feel is smooth, Nasno. Drink responsibly. Not for sale to persons under 18 years of age and not recommended for pregnant women. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Daddy, Daddy. This tank is Yes, that's true. It can store a lot of water. That's so true. Wow, it has a working surface like this. Mm -hmm. That's so true. I can see S I N T E S syntax. That is so true, my daughter. But it's father, it was Pyro. That's not true. But why? Why? <laughs> Syntex was the first to introduce double layer tanks in Ghana. Syntex again was the first to introduce white inner layers in Ghana. Syntex gives you the biggest warranty seven years. No matter your water needs, Syntex is the answer. Syntex tank. Are you strong? Are you tough? Hello, my name is Abeku Agri Santana. If there's anything that makes my life so easy, it is my bank. I love hanging out with my boys' boys at our usual fufu joint. But even without cash, we still need job better with EcoBank Mobile. 
No matter the time of day, my bank helps me stay in touch with my beautiful wife whenever she's away. And when my beautiful wife is in town, she never misses out on her favorite TV shows because I'm able to pay up all my TV subscriptions from the comfort of my mobile phone. Whenever she has to get groceries too, my bank makes it cashless and convenient. And the part my wife loves the most is when my bank makes it possible and easy for her to shop from any part of the world without moving. <laughs> Welcome to the smart world of Ecobank. Download Ecobank Mobile from Google Play Store All the App Store and discover the smart way to bank. Ecobank, the Pan-African bank. About one third of a million people live with HIV in Ghana. Close to 10,000 of them die each year, mostly as a result of a lack of antiretroviral drugs and adherence. In fact, close to 57% of children under 14 years living with HIV do not receive antiretroviral drugs, again as a result of inadequate funds to provide them with medication. Life expectancy for these children is grim. The big worry, close to 16,300 people are newly infected with HIV each year. With this alarming rate of HIV infections, all of us are in danger. And Ghana is headed for an epidemic explosion if nothing is done now to avert it. While the Ghana AIDS Commission is working hard to overturn the situation, the Commission urgently needs funding support from corporate Ghana and individuals to save lives. We're therefore appealing to you, corporate entities and individuals, to support the National HIV and AIDS Fund by dialing star 9898-HASH on MTN and Vodafone and follow the prompts or pay into the National HIV and AIDS Fund account number 101-863-161-3233, Bank of Ghana. Your donation will be used to prevent new infections and provide care for people living with HIV, including children affected by AIDS. For further information, please call Ghana AIDS Commission on 0302 919260 or email info at ghanaids.gov.gh. Give to save a life today. Ghana AIDS Commission partnering to eliminate HIV and AIDS. And PMX West is always brought to you by Syntex Tanks. It is strong, it is tough. Halomo Bitters experience greatness in every moment. Ghana AIDS Commission as well. And Syntex Tanks is one that you always can count on, no matter your water needs. Syntex Tanks is first to introduce a double layer tank, and now you can have as many layers as you want. Syntex Tanks is first to introduce white inner layer tanks in Ghana. And we now introduce you to the customer specs order, which lets you order any color and size of preference. Syntex Tanks gives you the longest warranty of seven years, which no other tank gives you in Ghana. So whatever your water consumption, size or project or demand, choose Syntex Tank. We have agents nationwide. Call them on 0244-335-168 or shop online at SyntexGH.com. Are you strong? Are you tough? My guest joining me tonight is Samuel Okudita Blackwa, who is in the thick of the action, uh, trying to coordinate the relief for his people in the Norton constituency. Uh, Samuel Kudita Blackwa, thank you very much for your time here on PMX. I know it's been a very, very busy day for you. It's also been a very, very busy day uh, for the Voto Regional Minister, uh, Dr. Archibald Lecher, uh, who has been at the forefront of also trying to bring relief to, to his people. And I want to quickly start with the very latest on the Interministerial Committee meeting that uh, Dr. Archibald Lecher, you told me about on Top Story around 530 I wonder if you've heard any news from that meeting and what decisions may have been taken. Hello, Mr. Lecher, if you can unmute for me, please. Uh, uh, news, sir. Uh, news, sir. Hello, Evans. 
Yes, sir. Thanks, and I can hear you. Yes, I was, I was hoping you could give me the very latest if you have any information on that meeting of your colleagues in the Ministerial Committee, even the decisions have been taken yet. Oh, sorry, Evans. I, uh, we, we are on the ground. We cannot leave the region uh, for any meeting in Accra now. So uh, we, we are yet to hear something from them. But we expect to hear something from them tonight. Okay, good. I want to go to uh, Samokuji to Ablaka. Mr. Ablaka, today has been a very busy day for you as well. Uh, thankfully, you are getting some help coming in from all quarters. Give us a sense of the help you're getting and how much of a difference it's making to your people. Confirm that today uh, we have been recipients of the generosity of Ghanaians. The uh, Tanka Owners Union were here um, in the morning and made a very impressive donation, uh, followed by KBG Foundation. And this evening, the Christian Council uh, came in with, uh, with another generous donation. Uh, these donations, which are largely uh, food items, will go a very, very long way. Remember that livelihoods have been destroyed uh, people's farms have been destroyed. People's fish ponds have been um, uh, destroyed. Uh, people's uh, 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 animal husbandry has been destroyed. Uh, people's businesses have been destroyed. Uh, so the people have no uh, livelihoods, as we speak. Uh, they fled for their life, their incomes. Uh, uh, the, the latest information is that the comes have increased to 20 uh, because uh, this morning the people of uh, Volukome had to be relocated. So we now have 20 camps. Uh, the water levels continue to rise. And so to the extent that these are people who fled for their life and they did not take anything, they couldn't salvage much or couldn't salvage anything at all, they really need to be supported to keep body and soul together. So these food items we are receiving will go a long way. But let me let me let me let me let me caution that uh, the donations coming in should not uh, let people think that we have had enough. Not at all. We are talking about over ten thousand people who have been displaced, according to NADMO figures. We on the ground uh, know it is more, but we just want to uh, use the NADMO figures so that uh, we are not accused of exaggerating. But we really know that this is. The, the situation is, is more dire than, than that. It's more than the 10,000 uh, that has been put up by NADMO. And then it is also important to emphasize that the VRA is still spilling. So uh, this we are in for the long haul. The VRA is telling us that they do not know when they will stop spilling. And then uh, and, uh, coupled, coupled so with the fact that the rains continue, the, yeah. rain, the, the rains are still... Falling. Today it rained uh, cats and dogs. In fact, uh, not, in fact, the Met Office, just to back the point, the Met Office tonight told us that we should expect the rains to still pour for the next month. Exactly, exactly. So it does appear that we are in for the long haul. So we are going to really need uh, this, this donation because it's going to take a lot of time for these people to be reset. Remember that their homes have been totally demolished. Uh, in Mapa, the, the, the last count was about 215 homes that have been totally destroyed. And across the constituency, there are more than 700 homes. Look, there are entire villages, even, that have been wiped off. If you go to Siko, for example, then it's gone zero. The entire village is gone. If you go to uh, a place like Kesemikofa, uh, 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 the entire village is, is, is gone. Uh, Volukome, uh, Dofokome, uh, uh, Klamada Boy. These are villages that uh, you can just describe them as ground zero because a lot of the homes there were mud houses. And you know that what mud houses cannot withstand is water. Once the water levels rise and they are in water for a few hours, it, 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 it gets uh, totally. Uh, 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 I mean, it, it just gets totally destroyed. So we we really are in a dire situation. And I, I must also emphasize that there are 
a few more items we need that have not yet really come in as we will expect. For example, tents. We mm. still need we still need tents. Uh, Nadmo promised us that they were going to get some more. Uh, they they have not been able to because we only have three tents so far in the 20 camps, and that's woefully inadequate. So people are cramped. There's massive congestion. So if we can get more tents, we'll appreciate it. If we can get more mosquito nets. Uh, will appreciate it because uh, so far uh, the mosquito nets that have been distributed are very, very, very scanty indeed, and people have had to share uh, these mosquito nets. Sometimes four or five people. This, and ideally, it should be really one person, maximum two people uh, in a, in the net. Mm. So, so, so items like that, and then medications, medications. Remember that there are lots of senior citizens who. Uh, fled, their medications have been washed away. Uh, they've given us the list. We are getting a few, though, but we will still need more more medications. And we can share the list we have compiled talking to these uh, senior citizens with you. And uh, uh, I must also um, commend the Ghana Medical Association. They've sent us doctors, and uh, we've been going around with the doctors because the next, the next year we have events, is that blooming public health crisis. Yeah. Because the water is contaminated. The water is, as I, as I speak to you, the water has risen and has, um, has, has covered cemeteries, covered mortuaries, you know, uh, uh, sewage systems, public toilets, refuse dams. So the water is so, so contaminated. And uh, this is a recipe for disaster. Uh, diseases like uh, typhoid, cholera, you know, these are the kind of conditions that these diseases like. And so we are glad that we have doctors on the ground who are helping us to to to, to foster and, and I must say that uh, the, an outbreak. I must say that the Ghana Medical Association has joined us. Uh, the acting general secretary will join us pretty shortly. But I want to bring in very quickly the Volta Regional Minister, uh, Dr. Lecture, who is still with us, Doc. Um, and I, I just want to quickly get an update from you. It's, uh, do we, is this still the case that so far we don't have a recorded fatality? Yes, Sivans, thank you very much. Uh, we fortunately, we still haven't had uh, um, any recorded fatality. Okay. And that obviously is the, is, is the good news in the midst of this gloom and doom that we've been reporting over the years. And we must keep it like this. Um, what, what's the briefing you've received? from the Volta River Authority, as far as the spilling of the, of the dam is concerned going forward, considering that the, uh, the Met Office is saying we can expect more rains? Uh, thank you. In fact, uh, they are with us. The Volta River Authority uh, officials are with us um, uh, on the ground, and um, they are always in, in touch with uh, colleagues all over the country, especially in the, uh, uh, the dam uh, sites and they, they, they always brief us. Uh, our expectation was that by the end of the uh, of, of next week, uh, they, are, they were expecting that the inflows to the reservoir would, would start uh, reducing, and then they would also have to cut down on the volume of water that is spilled. Yeah, uh, that was that is our expectation. By the end of today is Monday, today is uh, Tuesday. We are expecting that by by the end of the week. That was. Uh, our expectation where we had a press conference on yesterday or three days ago. Um, and um, that, is, that is our hope because um, as of now, uh, the water level keeps fluctuating. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, and sometimes I receive reports that certain places that were not flooded, um, they, they be, began seeing water coming around, and, and uh, we, we immediately mobilize the the the, the 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 disaster relief teams to move mm -hmm. to the sites uh, to to respond to the needs of the people so we i would say that it's quite stable um it, it, the situation is stable but we we are expecting it to be better i mean because the water must start receding you it it, it was shocking that the road that was being used to 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 ferry people uh, to the uh, safe heavens, 
uh, within three days, after three days, we had to use a, a boat to get to those places. And and when you are in the air, you see artificial islands. Uh, but these are actually roads that have been covered by water. Uh, so we 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 have a, a, a situation on our hand. But the assurance I can give is that the Regional Disaster Management Committee, uh, the various district disaster management committees are working as teams. And we have the emergency operations center established at uh, Bato in the North Town um, uh, District Assembly Buildings, and, and the, which is responding to the distress calls from uh, 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 from the people yeah. and from the communities. But, 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 but there's something I need to um, ask you, also because uh, people are watching this, and this is also a medium where we can get information down to the people who need it the most also. Um, because we're expecting the VRA to continue spilling, and also the Met Office is telling us we can expect more rains. For those who are still possibly in low-lying areas who, who would need further evacuation, what's the plan so that the devastation that we've already seen is, is not worsened when more water comes down because VRA needs to spill? What's, what's the plan to deal with that? Look, just look at your screens there. The water is actually at the roof level. Uh, and so this is really unprecedented for many, many people in that area. Uh, and this possibly, if not handled with care, with the water that we're expecting the VRA to spill in the next few weeks with the rains, could affect more people. Mr. Lecha, so what was the plan there so that more people may, are not caught up in the mix of the further water that we can expect to be spilled? Uh, thank you, Ivan. So we have the um, Ghana Armed Forces with us uh, on the ground, the Navy, the Marine Police, and then we also have officials of VRA uh, supporting us to monitor the water levels in the various communities. Uh, so what happens is that sometimes you go to a community, people are willing to evacuate. They are not willing to, to, to evacuate. Uh, we, we, we haven't forced anybody. But what we do is that we keep watch. We have people in the communities together with the unit committee members and assemblymen and the officials of the Ghana Armed Forces who are there with the boats ready to evacuate. And uh, sometimes at midnight we are evacuating. So the education has gone down. People are aware that uh, the situation is not safe. Where they are is not safe. And uh, it, it, it continuously uh, people are, are, are being evacuated. So we have people on the ground uh, with the zonal coordinators of NADMO uh, together with the local communities, the chiefs and the and, and the, uh, the opinion leaders in the various communities, they are supporting us so that any time we, we, we realize that a, a particular community is in danger, we quickly move in to evacuate them. That is why, fortunately, and, um, uh, fortunately we haven't had anybody get, getting drowned. And mm. uh, 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 we, we, we also have a challenge of, 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 of power, mm. but, but that is also uh, 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 understood because the the, the the transmission station is is water uh, is flooded. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, to electricity and water too is not very safe for the people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of um, uh, checks and balances, a lot of interventions are going on at the same time, and that that is why we have the emergency operations center where where everything is is is, is coordinated. Uh, so that we have engineers there who are advising us, the armed forces, the Navy. Uh, at the press conference yesterday in uh, Mepe, the Navy uh, officers uh, were there to to brief. Uh, and, and they the told that they've rescued some 8,000 people um, all across yeah, the, yeah. the Volta. That's right. That's, that, that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, 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 these this, um, interventions are going on 24-7. Uh, and I must also commend the health authorities. Yeah. The Ghana Health Service uh, the office, officers, because they are key members of the emergency, uh, the, the disaster management committees. Health, education are key members, together with the security agencies and other stakeholders. Uh, we, uh, we have these mobile clinics at all the, all the uh, safe havens. And yesterday, uh, the president visited one of them at, uh, at Mepe. And uh, the doctors are, are committed, the nurses are there attending to the people. And uh, I hear um, uh, there are some skin conditions which is not unexpected. But we, we're worried because uh, most of the 
the public latrines they they, they they have been flooded and for that matter every any any surface water you see there or well water is is heavily contaminated so we w- must make sure that the people have a, a, a good drinking water they have a, a clean water to drink so and that they don't have to you're, you're right and talking content. about the health intervention uh, dr richard salome who is the acting general secretary of the ghana medical association is joining us uh, dr salome thanks for your time on pm express hello dr salome Hello, Dr. Salome. If you may unmute for me. And I know that uh, it's important to hear the Ghana Medical Association because one of the things they've done is to dispatch doctors into the affected communities to assist with the health uh, uh, aspect of this emergency relief uh, coordination plan which is being implemented there. Uh, Dr. Salome, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, he, can, he can hear me. We'll try and fix that. It can, it can, we can we'll fix that. But uh, I want to go back to uh, Dr. Chibon Lecha. Hello, you uh, can you hear me, please? Hi, uh, doc, Dr. Salome. I can hear you, yes. I, um, I, I know you, you've had your men on the ground, doctors who are volunteering, helping people there. And today was the first day uh, when they've, they've, they went in. I, I want to get a sense. What are you seeing on the ground from the health point of view? Thank you for the opportunity, Evans. Um, our members have been on the ground from the early days. Mm. The only thing is that now we have mobilized more people to join them. Okay. Um, the team is being led by the voter divisional chairperson, and we have collaborated with the nurses as well as a clinical psychologist from 37 Military Hospital who has also volunteered to join the team. And they are on the ground as we speak today. They visited some of the mobile centers. Some of the things that we are seeing currently uh, the fact that a lot of the people are reporting with some malaria and then respiratory conditions, especially because of the crowding in this uh, and the centers. And then a few people are beginning to show signs of uh, waterborne diseases. So that's the main assessment assistance at the moment. But we are worried about the fact that there is still that big risk of waterborne diseases being blown out of proportion, especially since there are challenges with sanitary facilities in some of these places. Uh, you have about almost 1,000 people lodged in a, a, a school compound and with very few toilets that was meant for just a few students in the facility. And this is becoming a big challenge for, for, for us. Uh, and th- this is really grim uh, listening to what you've just been describing there. And you, how many men in all are, have you deployed? Oh, goodness me, I may have lost him there again. It's good to get a picture there. Uh, Dr. Chibol, let's say you just listened to the uh, Dr. Salome of the Ghana Medical Association. What he describes appears to me to be the beginning of, uh, of, of, of a possible outbreak there. Uh, are you adequately equipped for that eventuality if indeed it happens? Uh, first of all, Ivan uh, he said that prevention is better than cure. So we have to uh, make sure that uh, the people have uh, um, adequate um, safe water uh, uh, to use. Uh, That is important. And uh, as I said, we have the health sector very well represented in all our committees, uh, the district directors of health, uh, the regional uh, health directorate are supporting us in, in and we have disease control officers who are on the ground uh, to advise us on, on, on what to do. So, uh, but immediately, apart from the mobile, mobile clinics, uh, the health, uh, regional health director gave a report to us that they've established a, a, an isolation center at the Bato Kali Hospital. And they were planning us at yesterday to establish one at uh, Sogakope DC Hospital and another, another one at the uh, at the at, at um, uh, hospital. So the Ghana Health Service is um, is with us, and they are very much uh, uh, actively involved in, in what we're doing. And uh, uh, we are we, we we are hoping that uh, uh, whenever there is any outbreak, like the GMA uh, General Secretary is saying, um, the health staff together with assemblies and all of us, uh, the Regional Public Health Emergency Committee, which I also chair in addition to the disaster, Regional Disaster Management Committee, 
we'll, we'll put ourselves together and, and make sure that any outbreak is appropriately contained. Yeah, and, and let me ask you this. I mean, we're, we're also beginning to learn a bit few more lessons from what has happened. And at the very early stages when the VRA began spilling, they actually started doing sensitization. In fact, the deputy chief executive was in the community talking to them about what was about to happen. And he said something very interesting when he met the Awo Mefia uh, in Anglo that uh, the controlled spilling was well within manageable levels. Knowing what you now know, would you say we underestimated what, we, what was happening? Uh, if, if I say, in actual fact, uh, you know, I, we, we actually embarked on some uh, um, uh, simulation exercises uh, as far back as, as, as at May, uh, as far back as May 2023. And this very community, uh, which is the hardest hit, was, was, was involved. Uh, but when the speeding began on 15th of September, we actually didn't have much problem. In fact, uh, I was in the area. I only saw a few uh, fish cages being carried along uh, the, the 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 water from some fish farms uh, uh, along the Volta. But within a week, when VRE re- also realized that the inflows to the reservoir was increasing, and the and they had to protect the integrity of the dam, uh, they informed us that they were going to up the volume of uh, spillage. And and it was when the volume was up, and uh, they, they call it stage one, stage two. When it moved to stage two, uh, in order to protect the integrity of the dam, that we started having the, these problems of flooding. And it is it, it was so progressive, you know. As I told you, uh, there was a particular road that was being used, and it, it turned out to uh, after three days we had to use boats on that same road uh, with uh, the, the almost the roofs of the buildings covered. So it was it was very it was progressive, and uh, it was I would say I would confess that it was far more than we expected. Uh, so we we have to put our act together and and start working on it to control the situation. As of now, we we we're doing disaster management. We want to preserve lives. That is why the health aspect is also very important. Uh, Honorable Okuja Tuaprokra talked about people coming to support us. We are grateful. Uh, the health uh, of the people is important. We can save lives uh, from uh, flood, uh, from, from drowning, and then uh, they the, the, the succumb to uh, uh, communicable diseases. So we are very much uh, careful about uh, the health, the, 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 the dangers of uh, uh, of of an outbreak, and uh, we are happy that the disease control people at the district health, health committees at the regional uh, level are, are supporting us to detect any outbreak. And the doctors are, are welcome. We are happy they are here, so that if there's anything, they can also alert us as as, as early as possible. Yeah. So and, yeah. And I still have Mr. Kujuta Blackwa with me, Mr. Blackwa. Uh, as we speak tonight, you want a state of emergency declared in the affected areas. How much of a difference would that make? We we'll see uh, rapid mobilization of resources. We will see everybody on high alert, and we will uh, receive the much-needed uh, support. Uh, the regional minister will confirm to you that uh, the support coming in has been quite slow. We're still waiting on NADMO to uh, provide uh, a number of uh, uh, urgently needed uh, items. Uh, NADMO would also tell you that they uh, are under-resourced. If we do declare a state of emergency, it will come with adequate resources. And uh, the added advantage is that our international partners will then uh, come in and, 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 and assist us. Uh, because we all know the state of this economy. We all know that uh, liquidity uh, is a challenge. Uh, but if a state of emergency is declared, uh, we added to the renewed uh, uh, national effort and mobilization of resources, we are also going to get the much-needed uh, international support because that's what a lot of them are waiting for. 
once the national emergency is declared, it triggers a lot of foreign assistance. So it's, 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 it's really uh, becoming late. The government should declare uh, a state of emergency. Uh, what it will entail is that uh, we would have to convene parliament very quickly and, um, and, 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 and parliament uh, will, 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 will certainly endorse this decision. And, and then we can we can get uh, the inflows that we need to uh, improve the lot of, of our people. Because as the regional minister has said, you don't want to save people from drowning. And then because uh, they are kept in these uh, makeshift, makeshift shelters, they do not have the needed uh, uh, support system, then uh, they succumb to either uh, diseases or hunger or congestion or suffocation and and, 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 and and so on and so forth. So it is important that uh, this national emergency is declared. It is also important that government steps up, steps up efforts. And then I must continue to appeal to uh, compassionate Ghanaians, to philanthropists, to corporate Ghana, that we still need uh, support. Let me commend uh, the groups who have uh, called us today that they will come in here tomorrow. We are looking forward to receiving them. And uh, we, we, we really will need support because there's no end in sight. This clearly is going to continue even uh, till the end of the year or probably entering into next year. Um, and remember that even when the spilling stops, a lot of these people have their homes destroyed. So we need to have a discussion about resettlement. We need to have a discussion about compensation. And I insist that the VRA... Uh, have questions to answer when the House resumes. Uh, we will file a motion for a probe. We don't think that they conducted themselves uh, properly in this matter. And we insist that they have to announce plans for full compensation of the victims. They cannot be living in these camps for the rest of their life. They cannot uh, lose their farms for the rest of their life. They cannot lose their fish ponds, lose their businesses. So uh, uh, it's important to stress that there are layers and their faces. Now we are all concerned about the urgent relief that they need to survive in the camps, but it's just a temporal uh, measure. We must begin to look at their resettlement. We must begin to look at full compensation, and that we will not compromise on, 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 on those, those, those key, key, key indicators. And uh, trying to protect your identity by yourself is a lot like trying to be a quarterback without an offensive line. LifeLock alerts you to blindside threats you may miss on your own, even if you're monitoring your credit. If a threat happens to get through, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist is there to help. Join now and save up to 25% your first year at LifeLock.com slash aware. That's LifeLock.com slash aware to save 25%. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Two things to say that I, 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 I want to emphasize. One of the things you said, as far Parliament is concerned, and the declaration of the state of emergency, Parliament can have a say. In, in getting that done and, and getting the state to deploy all the resources that you need for your people? And you're going to make sure that is something that Parliament takes up? Absolutely. Absolutely. We've already discussed it. Uh, and uh, we, are, we, are, we are in the process of, of, of triggering uh, uh, a, a, a parliamentary action in that regard. Uh, we, we, we believe that this is a national disaster that we should all you know, uh, be united and, 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 and confront as, as the people. It shouldn't be we versus them, mm. or this party and that party. And that's why we are urging uh, the government to just declare a state of emergency and let's get that additional support both uh, within and without. Mm. Uh, but if government delays, then we will be compelled to uh, see what we can trigger uh, from our side in Parliament. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Archibald Lecher, that is a, a call that you've heard before. Uh, when we spoke at 5.30, you were expecting that your colleagues in the Interministerial Committee meeting will be considering all the options. Uh, can you confirm tonight that the state of emergency is one that the Interministerial Committee's meeting tonight had considered? No, Ivan, as I, as, I, as I said earlier, uh, I am on the field, and uh, I wasn't able to attend the meeting, but uh, at the end of the meeting, I'll get to know exactly 
what has been discussed, what decisions have been taken. Uh, because I know the president has given instructions that uh, uh, a budget should be presented uh, for support. Uh, but I don't know what what is, what is being discussed tonight because I'm not sitting in, in that meeting. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we are also expecting His Excellency, the Vice President, to, to visit the, 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 the disaster areas. And I believe that uh, he would come and also see. Uh, the president was there yesterday and uh, I believe that he's also coming with some personal support to the victims. But as, as, as has been said, uh, people are calling me. People call me, what can they do? Uh, somebody called me this morning suggesting about housing, uh, some temporary housing for the people. Somebody called, uh, people called that they want to do donations. What should, he, should, they, should, should they do away? Also in Accra today for some, to, uh, some embassies uh, asking for, uh, for some uh, support and uh, ambassador who supported us when who was flooded recently, uh, we went to him and uh, they are also planning to come and support. So we are appealing to all others to come and support us so that we can make our brothers and sisters our uh, as comfortable as as we can whilst they go through these uh, difficult times. Okay, uh, and just for a short clarity on this, you are not opposed to a state of emergency in the areas affected in your region. No, we have an emergency, and whatever uh, we can do to bring the emergency under control as early as possible is what we must all do. So uh, I, 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 I believe that we need an agent solution to what uh, we are faced with. And okay. uh, I think that whatever is needed, uh, whatever is needed, the, whether from the executive or from uh, the, 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 the parliament or uh, any, 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 anything that, for me as the minister in charge of the region, all I want is that we should find a solution to this great problem confronting us. Yeah. And whatever that that is uh, that uh, can be achieved is, is 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 we don't have any objection. Okay. And then very a quick word to Dr. Solomon. We lost you earlier. I just have a minute to go. Uh, you've talked about what you're seeing, and it appears to me what you're seeing suggests that we possibly are the beginning. Of, a, of some form of an outbreak there. Uh, what, what do you need to ensure that we don't have an epidemic on our hands? Hello, Dr. Salome. Goodness me. Well, um, we just ran out of time on this. I can't hear him, uh, unfortunately. Can you hear me, please? I can, yes. I can, yes. I mean, from what you've All seen, right, so, very briefly, um, what, what do you need to avert an epidemic? So uh, the, the thing to note is that the... Waterborne diseases are not only risking the places where the disaster has occurred. Mm. Downstream communities are also at risk because all these waters are going to be swept downwards. And people who are not even related to the disaster are also supposed to be looked at closely. The key thing is to make sure sanitary facilities are available and also portable water is available for people to use. Mm. Currently, the shelters where people are, there's a lot of crowding. Okay. And because of that, it's difficult for people to queue and use some of these facilities and also water because there's a problem with the water supply currently. And so water is being brought in, but sometimes not at the rates where the people need them. Okay. The other bit is to educate the people to use hand washing and then a lot of soap to wash their hands and make sure these things are available. A lot of hand washing points, Veronica buckets will be provided so that people can quickly wash and, their and, hands. And, and that is absolutely critical. Going back to the COVID protocols that we had because of the uh, possibility of an outbreak of cholera and others. Thank you very much. Listen, there's absolutely. more to talk about this. And I want to urge you, as you've seen the uh, GMA helping, they need volunteers. The minister needs volunteers. Samokudu uh, Tablaka need volunteers. Please, if you can, go in there and assist. Uh, and this is something we're keeping an eye on, even as the vice president gets there tomorrow, watching this closely and, and speaking about this more to get the help that they need. Enjoy the rest of the evening.